Okay guys, so this is a little video to try and help you with your unit 10, navigation unit. Um, first thing you've got to be able to do is fill in that route card. So, what we're looking at here is a map of Horton and Ribbledale. You've got to produce um, a route from your home to the college. If that's a very short distance, then what I would say is, make it a bit more of a fancier route to get there, just so you can put a little bit of information on. But the first thing I want to talk about is what's on this screen now, this, this map, and you can clearly see it has what we call grid lines, all going round. Yeah, and it's all massive grids. Okay, might be easier if I use my finger. Yeah, so we've got a grid there, and a grid there, and a grid there and a grid there like that okay at some point on the map you'll find there is numbers running up the grid so here we've got 75 76 77 78 79 and so on and so on and they will they what they call northerns and there will be some easterns going along so if I scroll this map down we should see some Easterns, there you go. Easterns are there. 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86. Northern and Easterns are what split the country up. So the country is massively divided by all these numbers. And we are basically, they are distance markers. Yeah? So that's 85 kilometers, 84. Uh, 83 kilometers, 84 kilometers, 85 kilometers, 86 kilometers, because each one of these squares is a kilometer by a kilometer on this map. All maps have a scale on them and they'll tell you how far something is. So this is, this equates to four centimeters on this map equals one kilometer. Okay. So I know that distance across there is one kilometer because that goes goes from 83 to 84 so that's eight it's at an 83 uh, kilometer point so when we're looking at uh, grid referencing all right what we're looking at is taking this square and being able to put a, a figure on it now you should be working on a six figure grid reference okay um, but I know we started off one of your video or one of your things on a, a four figure grid reference. So here what we got, got a 69, 70. Yeah, so I've got my, no, my northern's going up there, my eastern's coming across there. So this is great. Okay, so if I was to say, right, at this point here, yeah, where these walls intersect at this point here, I need to know what that grid reference is because on your route card you've got to put a starting grid reference and an end grid reference for that leg of the journey. So if I if I want to say this is my start, or in fact we've got a little road running here. So I want to say my starting grid reference is at this point here where this wall meets the road. Okay. So I need a eastern grid reference first, and my easterns are. It's on the start of the 83, because that's 81, 82, 83. So I've started 83, yeah? So that's a two-figure grid reference so far, and it's coming up at 69, that's 70, 71. So it's at grid reference so far is um, 8369. 8, now we need to make that into a six-figure grid reference, okay? So as I look at this, all right, we're doing Easterns first. That square, I need to break it down into an imaginary 10 um, segments. All right. So from there to there, I need to break it down. So if I went roughly in the middle, I know that's five. And my point's beyond that. So if I was to break that down, it might be approximately eight. So now my grid reference, eastern, is eight, three. Yeah. Eight. And my northern then... Yeah, because it's coming up. It's about, um, is it just sh slightly short of midway? So we'll call that four. So my northern is going to be 69, because that's the 69 part. 
four. Yeah, so I've now got a grid, a six figure grid reference of eight, three, eight, six, nine, four. So eight, three across, eight in the box, and then going up, six, nine, four. And that would be my grid reference to that point there. So, can see it on there. So if I minimize that down, you can kind of see now on here, yeah, grid referencing. Let me just turn this, otherwise it'll want to hold. So these are my easterns, that's my northerns. I start off coming across my easterns to a point where I want it to be. And at this moment it's saying it wants to be at that point there. So that is Easterns 17, Northerns 51. That's on a four figure grid reference. I'm gonna make that into a six figure grid reference now. That's all we did on the big map. So my, my uh, four figure grid reference, if we take the five off and the two off, 1751, which took us to that point. But this is actually where we wanna be. So I imaginary break this square up into 10, 10 by 10 segments. And I want to be at that segment there. So in which case we come across 17 and it's approximately in the middle. So that's going to be five segments in. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. To get to that first corner. So it's one, seven, five. And up, it's up three blocks so it's to the bottom corner. So it's two blocks up. It's the third block, but it's always the corner of it. Okay, so my northern is 51, 2. Yeah, which gets me to that corner. And that's how I get a six-figure grid reference. So for you guys, once you've plotted your route, or you know where you're going, so if I put my map back up, yeah, my route is, I'm, I was starting at this point here, and I give you the grid reference, and for my first leg, it's going to be to walk that wall, the distance of that wall. So I then need my end grid reference. I'm hoping you're getting that on there then. Yeah, get my end grid reference, which would be the point of the wall. So I've got a starting grid reference, six-figure grid reference, and I've got an ending six-figure grid Grid reference. Okay. So your next bit you've got to do is your distance travelled. So I can estimate this, okay, because on my map I know that one box is one kilometer. No, all right. Now what I could do is because I'm working on a hundred and twenty-five thousand grid map. All right. So what I could do is, it's four centimetres long on this map. So I know one kilometre is the length of that box. One kilometre is the height of that box. And from corner to corner is one and a half kilometres. Now one of the easiest ways to measure distance is actually to lie some string along the, the route on the map. And then you could just come and take that string because on the map there'll be a scale you would be able to come and take that string and lie that string against that scale and it'll tell you exactly how far you've travelled. All right, that's the, the dead easy way. But we can estimate it. Um, so if I go back to my, my map, the smaller one that you're looking at, that's on a 1 to 50,000. So 2 centimetres, because the box is half again. 2 centimetres is 1 kilometre. So I know that box is 2 centimetres long, 2 centimetres long, which is 1 kilometre by 1 kilometre, or... 1.5 kilometers through the middle. They're always a kilometer. Every grid squaring is always a kilometer. Okay? So if I go back to my map, yeah, so as we look at this map, that was our route. We're going across there, that distance. I can kind of take that distance and look at there and go, well, it's approximately two-thirds of the way so it's not a kilometer so it's 600 meters 
So I could mark that down as 600 metres. Yeah, nobody's going to actually come and scrutinise it to that extent. So it only has to be approximate in that sense. Yeah, so you've got 600 metre distance and that's how we can do our distance. So this is a, another way that you can measure your distance. So what you need is a piece of paper and we have got our starting point here and these are the different legs of the journey, okay? So what I can do is, and this also calculates the whole journey really. So what I do is I put a piece of paper on the market and I mark it again. You'll see as I go here. Yeah, so we've marked it, the distance from the A to B or not to be, but each leg of the journey. And then as I move, I turn my paper and I now put another mark on. So I've got my very start there. I've got where we travel to here, I've got a mark. And then I put, so I keep that mark where it was. And then I put my paper down to the next one. I put another mark. And then lo and behold, on my paper, I can put my paper down. And I've got each bit of the leg. I've now got a distance and I can work that out on my, through my, my scale that I'm working to. Because four, four, um, well, this is on a, di a different one that measures the distance from the first mark on the paper to the last AJ six centimeters equals three kilometers. I don't know what the scale was of that map, but if we th think about it, the scale uh, of the map I was working on previously, and we've measured six centimeters, well, we know four centimeters a kilometer, so half of four, it's going to be one and a half kilometers. That distance of the leg would have been. So that's how I would calculate. The distance of the leg. Right guys, you then need to know how high you've climbed. Now running around your maps is these brown lines and they signify contours, heights, okay? And these are heights above sea level. So you generally get, depending on the scale of the map, all right, if you're using a, an atlas map, then the likelihood is you're not going to get very many contour lines on there because it's just not detailed enough. Um, so this might be an aspect that you can't fill in. There may be some heights on there. Um, and if there is, you're going to have to use those heights. But if you're using a, a walker's map, the one to um, 250 uh, to 20, 25,000 or a one to 50,000 map, you will have contour lines like this on it. And these are heights above sea level. So, the thin brown lines represent 10 metre increments. The thick brown line is a, generally a 50 metre increment. This is just as a guide, it's not correct. Because you get them every 50 metres, the thicker brown lines. The closer these lines are together, the steeper the actual ground is. The further apart they are, the smoother it is. So here it's a steady climb, then it gets a bit steeper there, and then a bit steeper there, and then it just starts panning back out a little bit. Okay, so that's what's happening with the contour lines. So to give you a little bit of a visual idea, these would be the contour lines on the map, and you can see the shape of the, the, the uh, hill. But putting them into reflection, if you were to look at those heights, you can now see a visual of the hill. And it's relaying what this is doing, because this is only 2D to a 3D image. Okay? Right, guys, you now look up, need some timings on your um, program card. All right, your route card. So... Because there's maths involved and we're having to work all these things out, I've got a straightforward table here for you, which will make life a lot easier for you. Obviously, down the left, you've got your distances, okay? From 100 metres to 1,000 metres. 1,000 metres being one kilometre. 
Here we've got our speed in kilometers per hour. So two kilometers, three kilometers, four, five. Now what I would say to you guys, because you guys are doing from um, college or home to college, you're traveling on tarmac. So I, tra I travel at five kilometers per hour, okay? If you'd been um, off on the hills, then we might be looking at four kilometers per hour. If it was three kilometers per hour, then we'd have uh, add-ons to do for that in relation to the steepness of the ground that we're going on. So there's quite a bit of maths involved. So to keep it simple for you, straightforward. So if we imagine, if I travel 500 meters and I've measured that leg to 500 meters, at five kilometers per hour, that's gonna take me six minutes, okay? Six minutes. If I'm traveling at 100 meters or traveling 100 meters, it's gonna take me 1.2 minutes. So you're gonna to have to calculate what is 0.2 of a minute. Yeah. So if I was to calculate that, that would be 60 seconds makes up a minute. So 60 times 1.2, and it'll give me a figure. 60 being a minute, so uh, 0.2 of uh, 60 is is 72 seconds so that's going to be one minute and 12 seconds to cover 100 meters okay so <clears throat> do exactly the same so if it's six, uh, 72 there it's going to be 144 seconds there so 144 that's 24 seconds so two minutes and 24 seconds so you can work it out if my leg is 1,500 meters, I know it's 12 plus six, okay? So there's no reason why you can't work the distance out on this one. You've then got to put in time for uh, rests or meals. Well, if you just walk in there, then that might say zero, none. So then your total time, or if you if you are gonna have a rest or whatever, that might be three minutes, five minutes. So you put that in. So then your total time for your leg is going to be your time allowed for travel and your rest, total leg of the time. This estimated time at end of the leg, it all depends uh, at what time you're setting off. Yeah, so I would leave that blank. You don't need to detail that. And then you've got brief details of route to be followed. So this is just looking at the route you're going to follow. So this could be, let's imagine I'm walking from um, David Ockney Building up to Trinity Green. So I might say uh, from, the, from the main doors of David Ockney Building, I'm going to turn right and head up the hill till I reach the University of Bradford. And in between the University of Bradford and their other building, there is a barrier across the road. Directly opposite that road is a side street. We're gonna walk, but that would have been a leg. So that would have been the only detail I would have done there. My next leg would be to walk down the side street. So that would be leg two. So I'd have had a grid reference for David Hockney, a grid reference for where that barrier was between the two buildings. I would have calculated the distance. I'd have calculated the height because we're climbing up. I'd have calculated how long that should have took me. Um, my, if I have any rests in there, my total uh, leg journey, I'd leave the estimated time at the end of the leg um, because you don't know what time is. Oh, well you could do because you can put start of leg. You can put a time there for it. Um, so you could clearly say, well, if it takes, it's 8.40, what time would you set off to college? If it was 8.40 on a morning, um, I'd be saying, you're bloody late. Why are you late when you get there? Yeah, but let's say 8.40. So it takes that distance. We've done the maths and it says it takes me 30 seconds to get up there. So the, the estimated time out there would be 8.40 and 30 seconds. You give a brief detail of the route. And your escape to could be some other way of trying to get round that route or down another side street. Okay. And it's as simple as that. Then leg two obviously would have been going down that side street. So I'm hoping this video has helped you a little bit 
in how to complete this. And we just go down each leg, each leg. So I've got starting grid reference, end grid reference. My end grid reference is my starting grid reference again. And then I have an end grid reference for each uh, leg. Okay guys, so hopefully that's sorted it out for you.